go over both safety exits on the vehicle. We have the windows. There's a bar that you lift up and then push the window out and away. Uh, they're clearly marked. And as well, the back of the cabin, we have a roof hatch. It's black We push that black lid forward. Then there's trees. However, as you start moving up into the uh, sub-alpine, you start getting a lot less uh, biodiversity. There's more just the larger carnivores. There might be some uh, smaller game, but generally uh, just hares, uh, but mostly cougars, uh, black bears, horsely bears, uh, bighorn sheep, uh, mountain goats, antlers and stuff like that. But it's pretty tough uh, conditions up here. And then once you get above that, uh, Subalpine, you get into the Alpine region. And at the Alpine region, there's not a great deal of wildlife at all. Maybe uh, the occasional pika, as uh, they are very uh, sensitive to temperature change. They only survive in colder areas. Anything above 25 Celsius, they perish. Uh, this Alpine region is usually distinguished by the division between the tree line, uh, where the tree line ends. Anything above that Alpine region, and that's usually at about uh, 2,100 meters to 300 feet. On the left hand side we have what's known as the ancient forest. These trees were forest sampled back in 1986 and at that particular time they were dated at uh, over 680 years old. These trees have a very very short growing season, maybe six weeks a year. As well the conditions of the soil, uh, there is no soil, it's mainly it's just rock, really granular rock, so really tough conditions for them to grow so they take a long time to develop. The uh, river that we have flowing beside us, that is known as Sumatra. You may have noticed the lake, that's Sumatra Lake, so this is Sumatra River. The, this particular river is known as a braided river. So what occurs over time as the glacier is receding, it's grinding up a lot of that uh, stone that's trapped underneath. So it doesn't just, not a big chunk of ice on rock, there's actually rock trapped in there too. It's grinding away as it moves along and it produces what we call rock flour. And that's what gives us water that kind of silty green look. And over time, as that uh, rock flower starts depositing in the, the riverbed, it actually changes the course of the river. And that's why it's called the braided ri river system, because it's always braided, being braided back and forth. Now we're coming up here, you'll see some large boulders on both sides of the road, or on, on this hill. We also have uh, quite a large slope. This is called a scree slope. So what occurs over time as that snow falls down and melts during the daytime and then freezes overnight or just rain, it'll freeze overnight because for every thousand feet you go up, you lose two degrees temperature. Uh, it starts breaking the mountain up and it starts uh, falling down little by little. Parks Canada contracts what are known as uh, scalers. They'll come out wherever they find a susceptible part of the mountain that potentially could break off. They scale it off after they shut the highway down and uh, once they satisfy that there's no more rock going to come down, they then uh, reopen the highway and everything stick any more to go. On the left hand side, you see that peak uh, a little bit behind us now. That's one of the Kitchener Peaks. This other Kitchener Peak is uh, not as big as it used to be. It's probably about two thirds of the volume of this mountain fell into the valley. As you've been going along, you may have noticed that it's a fairly U-shaped valley. Uh, beyond it, if you came up from Jasper, quite a U-shaped valley. But at this particular point, it's a V-shape. So U-shape indicates glacier's passage. Uh, V-shape is water erosion. And this hillside, uh, somewhere between 10,000 and 1,000 years ago, this Kitchener slide occurred. Uh, similar to, maybe you've heard of the Frank slide uh, down in southern Alberta. The town of Frank was located at the bottom of the mountain. Uh, the miners, uh, there was a mine there, the miners were doing their thing. Uh, hit a fault and it caused the entire mountain to collapse and wiped the town of Frank off the map. This, uh, this is a similar kind of thing that occurred here. However, it uh, obviously wasn't mining, uh, but some fault in the mountain, enough water got in, enough breeze loss cycles, and it just caused a collapse. First couple of glimpses of Skywalk. This is completed in 2014, anchored some 30 meters into the uh, mountainside. It's 36 and a half meters out over the valley floor. And about 200 or 283 meters above the valley floor, or 918 feet. It's built on a cantilever design, so it's designed 
designed to flex a little bit in uh, you know high winds. We have uh, what's known as catabatic winds that come off the uh, Athabascan glacier. Catabatics are great for downward and downhill. 150 km an hour winds bumping against a rigid structure. It wouldn't last very long, but because this is a cantilever design, it allows a little bit of flexation to go on there. And you can see the louvers that were on the outer edge of that. That helps to uh, dampen the effect of those winds. But the glass itself, there's four panels on there. Three of them are structural. And this gives it its strength, upwards of uh, 10,000 pounds per square inch. So we can pretty much park our entire fleet of the ice coaches on there wouldn't budget. Those uh, ice explorers uh, are way up in about 27 tons. 25 to 81. Yeah, straight ahead of us, that's all part of that kitchen or slide. The whole ridge line going down. Boop, boop.
опасная идея. I've got plenty of them. Depending on the topic, I've got at least six for each. Yes. Yeah. Just need a willing partner. So I'm these... so sorry. All good. You're not the first person you won't be. Well, I just have this feeling that me needs to be touched. So these are only replicas. Made in China, anyway. Oh. They don't trust us with the real stuff. Oh. We break too many things here. Like, just look at the bear spray. It's pretty beat up. There is such a thing, though, eh? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of stores around in the national parks do sell this bear spray. Mm -hmm. It is a last resort. So when the bear is this far away Isn't and attacking, yeah. you pop off the cap. Hopefully you are up or downwind of, upwind of it. So when you spray, it goes and not back into you. Yeah. A couple of staff members did find out how painful bear spray is. They went on a rafting trip and one of them had bear spray in their bag and it just came out. Uh -huh. And as they were trying to pick it up, like the cap came off and it just set Straight off on onto them. Mm -hmm. They, yeah, they reckon it, they were saying it took a good couple of days to stop their Ugh. skin burning. So you're telling me that, oh, that's a black bear. Yep, black bears are over this side, grizzly bears over that side. It's different size, eh? Yeah, just, just a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Have a good day, guys. Okay, any questions about bears? Where to find one? Where to find one? That is the golden question. Uh, they are present in Banff and Jasper National Parks. There are only around 150 grizzlies between the two. So you're either lucky or unlucky to run into one. And everybody is like marked by the government. Uh, yeah, pretty much. They're all sort of tagged, uh, so we can keep track of them. Uh -huh. You have any app to find them? They won't share like the password. <laughs> Parks Canada won't share the password with us. Ah, so there is one. We ah. have tried bribing them. Doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, uh, yeah, oh. big secret that they don't want to share. But have seen a lot more black bears around. Mm. Unfortunately, they don't get our emails and show up where we want them to show up. <laughs> Typical Fine. reception in the Rockies. So there's no water? No. No, it's just lights. Uh. Oh, there's rain water. Okay.
Throughout the season. So, all this water is for 